Uh, you asked me to say a few words about the inaugural Fields Medal Symposium at the Fields Institute uh, next October, and um, I'm very excited about it. It uh, is uh, has a, a extremely interesting group of speakers from many different areas. Uh, we hope that, uh, of course, they are speaking uh, on the area that is related to the work of Ngo Bao Chao, who is the Fields Medal uh, the, field, the symposium is honoring. And uh, they represent um, uh, very strong mathematicians from actually many different areas of mathematics and physics. And uh, taken as a whole, uh, the topics that are in this symposium um, are... Uh, I think, a uh, window to the future of a very large part of mathematics. But it's also a very old subject, and it goes back um, a century, more than a century. And um, maybe I, I thought I would actually uh, look at the poster that is, um, uh, has been designed uh, for this symposium. I guess it was designed by Andrea Yeomans of the Fields Institute with mathematical assistance from, I think, uh, Bill Castleman, a mathematician at uh, University of British Columbia. But uh, it's a beautiful poster. Um, it's, it's very pretty to look at in, in color. There's Ngo Bao Chao, the Fields Medal winner. Um, he solved a, a fundamental problem in uh, mathematics in the, what is known as the Langlands program a problem that's about 35 years old and was holding up progress uh, in many different uh, as, uh, parts of the uh, subject. Um, there is um, our attempt, or Castleman's attempt, to draw a picture of the geometry behind the problem that Ngo solved. It is known as the Bruja Tits Building. Um, for uh, uh, it's just a one-dimensional version of it. They're, they occur in all dimensions, and it's it's a graph with vertices, um, which is supposed to be infinite. You can see that there's a little tri there's three little lines there, and then uh, going to another vertex which has three little lines going out of it, going to a smaller vertex which has three little lines going out of it, and so on. Um, um, and it's it's meant to be infinite, but you can't draw it infinitely. Uh, uh, many you can't draw it infinitely on on the on the page, but you can see. I don't know how good your the camera is, but you can see. Um, um, no matter how um, um, far you go, there is another tri There's another vertex with three lines emanating from it, and. Um, uh, one of these actually exists, in, these exist in all dimensions. It's the, the lines become planes or three-dimensional spaces, and the vertices become lines or uh, surfaces themselves. And um, uh, there's a, a, a very uh, uh, um, important um, combinatorial question that has to do with uh, the analysis of functions. I'm using a technical word here, but... Uh, the analysis of functions on these geometric spaces, these, these so-called uh, Bruja Tits buildings. So um, uh, th this is the problem that he solved, which um, allowed progress to uh, advance in, across many different areas of mathematics. We're only just seeing um, some of them uh, unfold now. Um, but then um, I actually really like what they have done with this poster at the bottom. Um, without naming them, they have um, um, given pictures of seven uh, um, of the world's leading mathematicians going back uh, almost 100 years to illustrate uh, the, the different roots of the subject, this, this so-called Langlands program. So right here at this end, that's Robert Langlands, uh, for whom the program is named. He, um, uh, about 40 years ago, he uh, discovered, 45 years ago even, he dis and, and, and uh, perhaps between 30 and 45 years ago, he discovered a stunning collection of conjectures that are still very far from being understood 
and which uh, will unify, um, when they are understood, will unify large parts of mathematics, um, so to speak, the different, st different streams of mathematics that you can trace in the past uh, uh, through these various mathematicians. Maybe I'll start at this end. This, I think, I, uh, I'm not used to seeing a picture of him young, but this is Hermann Weil, um, who was in the earlier part of the 20th century. He um, um, did many, many different things. He did rep representations of groups. He's perhaps best known as an analyst. Um, um, he did uh, spectral theory uh, and did many, many important things in that area. But um, um, his relation to the Langlands program, he, um, again, I, I uh, will just say the words, he classified uh, irreducible representations of compact Lie groups in a very beautiful way that uses analysis and that um, is kind of um, um, uh, uh, a foreshadow of what was going to come and what is in fact still coming. This is, uh, I guess, this is Eric Hecke, who uh, worked in Germany. Um, 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 Hermann Weil worked at the Institute for Advanced Study after he left Germany. Um, Institute for Advanced Study is in Princeton, the same place that, um, to, that where Einstein went when he left Germany. Eric Hecke worked in Germany. He um, perhaps was not so well known at the time, but he laid the foundations for the relation between um, uh, uh, number theory and analysis, uh, the kind of objects that uh, in a very uh, that in a very um, sort of beginning form were at the roots of, of the Langlands program. Uh, this, that's Emil Arten. Um, again, uh, he worked in Germany. He discovered um, objects in number theory, so-called uh, known now as Arten L functions, which are at the center of uh, the study of numbers, of prime numbers, and how they factor and how they're related to um, among themselves and, and uh, um, their basic fundamental properties. Uh, this is Atlee Selberg. He also worked um, for many years, um, all his life really, um, most of his life at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton. He discovered, um, uh, he worked, uh, did many, many different things in number theory, but his relation to the Langlands program is through uh, a miraculous formula that he discovered um, called the Selberg uh, trace formula um, <clears throat> that in its more general form today seems to be one of the most powerful techniques of trying to prove the conjectures uh, of Langlands um, that are still uh, largely outstanding. Uh, this is Harish Chandra. Uh, he came from India. He started off as a physicist, actually. He was a student of Dirac in uh, England, but he found um, he, he, he's very modest in many ways, even though he was a towering, over -press, uh, over, a towering um, um, personality. Uh, he, he was at his heart really quite modest. He said that he felt he couldn't do physics and that he uh, was better at mathematics. So he, um, um, he laid the, he did, he worked in a way that perhaps was different uh, than, um, perhaps in, in some aspects was different than what had ever been done before. He took one subject, representations of semi-simple Lie groups, and he spent um, 40 years studying them. And he studied them um, so deeply that uh, there, we are still, many people are still trying to, um, learn um, what he did in it. That is another root of the Langlands program. Uh, this is uh, Alexander Grothendieck, perhaps arguably maybe the most romantic figure in mathematics. He is still alive today, um, but nobody knows quite where he is. He revolutionized the subject of algebraic geometry. Um, he, he, um, he's the father of modern algebraic geometry. He's arguably um, the greatest mathematician of the 20th century, certainly one of the greatest mathematicians of the 20th century. Um, 
he, um, uh, his connection to the Langlands program is his discovery of uh, what are what he called motives, fundamental objects which um, are, are uh, sort of by analogy they're almost like fundamental particles uh, that they are the uh, subjects that they're the basic building blocks of algebraic varieties which are the um, st subject of algebraic geometry. And uh, motives are one of the fundamental pillars of the Langlands program. And there, of course, is Robert Langlands, who uh, um, miraculously uh, somehow put all of the threads, I mean, perhaps he did, they didn't all appear in his mind at the same time, but it has turned out that uh, all of the threads that came from the uh, discoveries of all of these mathematicians somehow come together uh, in the Langlands program and in the wonderful con conjectures that he uh, discovered um, and which we're still working on and which this conference is uh, our attempt to elucidate them around the work of Ngo um, to perhaps inspire mathematicians for the future and um, uh, lead, uh, lead us to the next step in being able to solve them. So I hope that uh, uh, many of you uh, that uh, are, are seeing this video will um, think of coming, even if you're not mathematicians, even if you're not scientists, physicists, um, will perhaps think of coming to one or two of our uh, more pub, uh, one of our two of our perhaps more fundamental lectures or public lectures. Um, we hope that the lectures themselves will be at a level that's accessible at least to many people. And uh, I hope you'll uh, consider coming to, uh, to at least a part of this uh, symposium.